Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, I'm taking a look at the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Legends, Daughters of Thanos, and that would be Gamora and Nebula. Now, these popped up on Amazon for a very short time from a third-party seller. The price was a little bit higher than standard retail, but you know what? These two, I've needed them so bad since the first movie, I, I had to jump on it. I couldn't pass it up. I know we got a Gamora with the first movie, but... It never stood right. It never looked right. It was a little bit off. This one looks much better. I had to do it. I couldn't help myself. And now that I got them, I'm going to pair them up like I usually do with Marvel Legends. I, instead of going through them all single file, I'm going to do two at a time. And it's just fate that I got Gamora and Nebula together. Looking at the package, I have standard Marvel Legends boxes, black, the logos, big window. I love the purple that they use for the Guardians of the Galaxy waves. It just sets the figures off. Now Nebula, because of her costume color, kind of blends into the background. It's harder to see her against the back. So it kind of works against it here, but it's the packaging. Whatever. Both figures do share the same packaging, so you see Gamora on the one side and then Nebula is pictured on the other side. On the back, pretty pictures of both figures, but to tell you the truth, looking at here, I think the actual figures look better than the promotional prototype shots. Just looking at it in the package, I'm already impressed, so I can't wait to get these open. But I'm going to talk about the packaging for a little bit longer. How's that? Got the wanted poster looks down here. Got their bios up in the corner. Down here is some unreadables. It says something like, don't get the two figures too close together, or they'll start fighting, and then you'll never hear the end of it. But I'm going to get these open because I'm super goddamn excited to get these open. I swear. I'm going to get these open and see what's going on here. And there we go, all out of the package, and oh my god. And that's exactly how I would say it every time I look at these figures. Oh my god. Now this is where I usually talk about sculpt and paint, and I usually go over each individual character, but I'm going at both of them at the same time, because both of them are so amazingly sculpted that it's blowing my freaking mind. The sculpts on both of these are amazing. Gamora, the wrinkles in her coat going down to the boots that have all this detail on them, it's just mind-blowing how much detail they packed into this. And you think, wow, I don't know how it could get any better, and then you flip over to Nebula, and holy shit, it's just so much to look at. Now don't get me wrong, Hasbro usually does go all out for the movie figures. They get their own individual sculpts, they get a lot of detail, but the likenesses here and all the sculpt work is the best I've seen in a while. And then going over to paint apps, again, oh man, it's just insane the paintwork on these. And I want to think that Gamora's face is actually printed on. I know I missed it with the Star-Lord review, but if you get up really close to the face, it's almost pixelated. Just like we see with import figures from Figure Arts and now Mafex. I don't know if Hasbro snuck in some new technology, but it's working out great. It really is. This is almost import quality for 20 freaking dollars. Nebula, it's not quite the same thing because she doesn't have the detailed eyes, the pupils, the irises. She just has the blacked out eyes for the most part. But the skin tones on both Nebula and Gamora are just insane. Gamora has that soft green skin tone to it. It's not plasticky. It's really skin-like. Then move over to Nebula. She has kind of that metal sheen all over. You would think it was plastic, but I think that's actually movie accurate. I could probably sit here for another 10 minutes just talking about paint and sculpt, but I'm going to move on. Move on right into some more paint talk. How's that? But we're going to look at this. The gradation on Gamora's hair from darker up top to the redness of the bottom, it's just done so well. It's, it's not just blatantly pow, pow, two different colors. It's It kind of fades from one to the other. And then like I was talking about the skin tones, her eyes, her lips, the silver inside these grooves on her face, just perfectly done. I mean, the likeness may not be 100% perfect, but I would call this 95%, 96. This is even better done than the prototype that's pictured on the back of the packaging. And then looking at Nebula, the color separations between blues and silvers and purples and all the other different colors that are working here, it's just amazing. And, and, I, and I know I keep saying that, amazing, but it's incredible work done here. Notice the black lines on the skin tone here. It's not done on the silver, and I guess you could look at that as a negative, but maybe they didn't do that because it's silver. Maybe it's a metallic color. I don't know. But there's also a lot more grooves on the metal arm over here, so maybe that's why they didn't do it. 
Same with the side of her head. There's all this kind of tech look to it, but no paint there to make it stand out, really. But that's not me even complaining about that. That's just me attempting to point out some negatives on this figure. Now, if I were to gripe about Gamora any, putting away looks, putting away sculpt, putting away paint, there is still kind of some negatives going on with the, how she stands and the articulation. She's got the high heels, and that always seems to pose a problem in the articulation department. And in the center of gravity department. She is still a little bit hard to balance, hard to stand. It's still a little bit mm, frustrating to get her into a pose. And also because of the high heels, the forward-facing pin for Rocker doesn't work like it should. It goes down and it ends up just being a swivel. Thankfully on Nebula, she's pretty much flat-footed boot. There is some slight heel there, but it's forward facing pin. She gets a lot more rocker ankle action there. But going over the articulation on Gamora, she's a ball at the top of a hinge in the neck, but the hair does get in the way a little bit. And for some poses, it looks like she's got kind of a hunchback look to it, so you got to keep that in mind when posing her. But you can kick it back, and it looks like she has better posture. Forward, the hair gets in the way. She can look down. She can look up. There is some tilt, and then swivel. Hinge of swivel at the shoulder, comes up past 90 then swivels around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow, comes up to 90, and then it swivels. So hinge and swivel at the wrist, she's got hinge, got swivel. Ball joint in the torso, but not a lot of movement there. Back, pretty good. Forward crunch, not so much. Side, side, and twist. Hinge and swivel at the hip, comes forward almost 90, comes out past 45. Back, not so much. And then on the left side, there's a holster with a leg strap but it doesn't get in the way at all. Swivel at the thigh, double knee comes all the way up, hinge at the ankle, good forward, good back, and then like I was talking about a minute ago, the forward facing pin, it doesn't face forward, it's pretty much down, so you just get swivel there. Articulation on Nebula, pretty much the same, but the range is a little bit different. She doesn't have any hair to get in the way, so a ball on top of a hinge in the neck, she can look down, she can look up. Not a lot of tilt here because there's not a lot of cave in the bottom of the head. And then there's swivel. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder comes up to here. The costume kind of gets in the way. She's got these shoulder pads. So swivel doesn't work that great on the left side. It kind of kicks out whenever you come up and around. A little bit better on the right. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to almost 90. Not quite, but most of the way. Then there's swivel. Hinge and swivel at the wrist. Her right is hinged up and down for gunslinging action. Then there's swivel. Ball in the torso, but just like Gamora, it's a little bit hindered. There's not, well, hardly any forward at all. Back, not so much. Side, side, swivel. Her belt piece is loose. It floats, so it comes up away from the hips whenever you get articulation in there. She kicks forward most of the way. Back, pretty good range of movement. Out, a little past 45. Swivel at the thigh, all the way up with a double hinge knees. Hinge at the ankle, kicks forward really good, kicks back really good, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Gamora comes with her sword in its uh, kind of lightsaber hilt position where the blades aren't out. And then she also comes with her sword with the blade extended. And the cool thing about this, even though it looks 99% like her original sword, this is not the same mold. It has more detail to it, uh, some little grooves, some markings, some design on it. So, yeah, it's not the same sword. And for the hilt, she has this holster on her hip, but because of how rubbery it is and how it was in the package when I first got it out, it's you can see how it's bowed back. If you try to put the hilt into it, and then snap it in. It doesn't really work. It pops out of the clip. I guess if you kind of made it stiffer along the back, made it stick out a little bit or something, put some kind of pressure on it. So, of course, now that I'm showing it, it's staying in there. That's how it works. Welcome to my world. And then she comes with a big rifle. I love the look of this thing. It's got kind of that swirly twirly plastic that we see with some of the metallic characters, but it works here because it looks like a metal, it's a kind of. It's got a sheen to it. It has a kind of a black wash, but not real heavy. But the sculpt itself is just great. It, I haven't compared it to actual steels, but it looks pretty accurate. The problem comes into play, I, her hand is a little bit small. It holds the gun, but getting it in there is a bit of a chore. Once you get it in there, she seems to hold it really good though. My problem falls in with her not being able to hold it with the other hand. There's not any kind of thin part on the gun and the hand is molded kind of a grip for the sword. So 
you either stretch the fingers really far out to hold the gun, or you just have her one-handing it. For Nebula, she comes with a pistol. It's a little bit plain, but I think it is the one that she gets in the movie. A little bit small, but it's got some detail to it. I can't complain about it, really. That, and she holds it really well. And then for her other accessories, she comes with an alternate arm. I'm not. I, it's hard to explain some of this without getting into movie spoilers, but... I think that her arm with the blue hand on it is maybe from the first movie. Because in the first movie she loses her hand. So in the second movie she has this claw kind of hand to it. And to switch those out you just pull at the elbow. It comes apart and you put the other arm in there. Now if you overextend her right arm it pops out too. Now for comparison here is Gamora beside the old version. There's no contest here. I, I never really liked the old version. It looked a bit for lack of a better word, action figurey. The new one, it's a lot more subtle. The skin tones are a lot more just natural. The details are a lot sharper. There's a lot more sculpt work to it. The new one wins hands down. And then putting her beside the new Star-Lord with the short jacket, yeah, this completely works for me too. Size-wise, she goes up on the movie shelf. The old ones gets eliminated right now. I mean, I'm calling it right now. The old one isn't even making it back into the room. It's going straight to the tub. And then Nebula comparison with Gamora works great size-wise next to each other. And Nebula also completely works next to the new Star-Lord. It's almost as if they were meant to go together. It's weird how Hasbro does that. So at the end of the day, I could not be happier. I swear, I could not be happier. I'm so freaking tickled about these that I'm just giddy about it. Nebula herself, it's even in the movie, it's hard to see Amy Pond behind all the makeup, behind the baldness, behind the mechanics of the character. But this figure brings it across perfectly. I mean, the likeness couldn't be any better. And really the same goes for Gamora. We're talking about $20 action figures here, and they're almost import quality. I almost feel like that I don't need an SH Figure Arts or a Mafex or whoever else decides to make these. These are going on my shelf. It's gonna be hard to beat. And that's not even counting the accessories. They didn't have to throw in Gamora's rifle. They didn't have to throw in Nebula's alternate arm with the uh, claw hand, but they did. Hasbro is killing it with this wave. I don't have any of the others, so you won't see any grand group shots here because I didn't want to do it without the new rocket in there. That's how much I hate the old rocket at this point. It's just difficult to pose. It's difficult to make look natural in a group shot. So. I should have the rest of the figures sometime this week. So that's when I'll get into bigger, better, more elaborate group shots with the whole team. But for now, this will work. This shows how good Gamora and Nebula are. And they're really good. Guys, just trust me. Just believe me. I know I get a lot of flack for being too positive. Or <laughs> too negative every now and then. But with these two, I feel like I can't be positive enough. I just... If you see them, grab them. Don't be like me and overpay for it just because you're so excited about getting the figures. They're $20 action figures. Totally worth the 20 Shit. I almost feel like it was worth me paying over a little bit. And I didn't pay way too much. I didn't pay $60, $75 for these. I just paid a little bit over retail. And even at that point, it's totally worth it. I, I am justified in this purchase, I feel like. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the food.